everyone, AJ Legends here, and this is a new segment here on the channel, in which I like to call Masterpiece Theater, in where I'll be reviewing dramas and art house movies. Let's waste no time, let's get started. The first movie of Masterpiece Theater is Trumbo, directed by Jay Rose, starring the man, Mr. Heisenberg himself, <clears throat> Brian Cranston. Uh, Trumbo, what can I say about this movie? Uh... I've seen this movie twice, and I love it. It's great. It's got electric performances uh, from Diane Lane, from Helen Mirren, from John Goodman, from Louis C.K., and Michael Stahlberg. And, of course, you know, Brian Cranston, the lead role as Trumbo, is outstanding. Uh, Trumbo is inspired by true events. Uh, during the late 40s and the early in the, and going into the 50s and on, uh, there is a the Red Scare was happening, partic and uh, particularly the Hollywood Red Scare. And where a number of writers were blacklisted. And those writers were known as the... Um, fuck, I can't remember what they were called. I, I had the name too, but there were ten of them. The Hollywood Ten. There we go. There these, 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 the Hollywood Ten were known as were writers that were blacklisted for being communists. But um, when you watch the movie, it explains, it explains, it explains like exactly what they were. Uh, they were communists because... They didn't hate America. They didn't like the direction America was going at that time. They didn't like the government, the American government, and how the American government was perceiving things. So that's why they turned to communism, because they, because communism was a more of like an open type of political thing to them, where they can express themselves better. Of course, because America back then was so closed-minded, it's either if you're not a 100% pure American, then you're an enemy, and you can't have that in Hollywood back then was very lucrative so they didn't want to be associated with these guys so they blacklisted them and they weren't able to get work so <laughs> pretty much the only way Trumbull can get work is if um, well he had to work for like low scale productions like those uh, Z-list companies that made movies like The Man from the Swamp or The Alien with the Seven or The Alien from Mars for example like those schlock companies and they had to use different pseudonyms in order to get his work out but what's also was so good is that um, one of his writers, who was a friend, who was a friend of his, uh, had a and of course and for me and for the mainstream movies, Trumbo had to like his through his friend had to had to like had to release his you know mainstream scripts and his friend, but had to pass them off as his own, which something he didn't want to do because he didn't write it and he didn't want to take credit for someone else's work, but the climate of Hollywood at that time forced him to do so. And that's what sucked. And that's what that's what sucked about the Reds, about the way Hollywood was, the way Hollywood in America was in at that time, because talented people were forced to hide their talents, and it it just made for just. I just wonder why they were so against the American way, or well, the American government, I should say, because it was so like one sided, and it you could say abandoned them creatively, but. They pulled, they, but they persevered, and you know, eventually Trumbo ended up getting the recognition he got for the movies that he had written, which was, you know, which are big movies people know, like Spartacus and Exodus, which were two really big movies back then. Uh, Spartacus being the one that starred Kirk Douglas, and of course, the guy who played Kirk Douglas in this movie was spot on. I forgot the actor's name, but he was spot on. He he acted and looked just like a young Kirk Douglas. It was like really mesmer. It was really a thing to see. And like I said, Di um, Diane Lane plays Trumbo's wife, and Diane Lane, hmm. she's an age, she is an ageless beauty. She gets she gets better with age, my opinion. Uh, she was wonderful looking in this. She was wonderful in this movie and looked great. Helen Mirren, who was a legendary actress, was in this movie played a heady reporter. She was good. She was also great. You know, Louis C.K. was uh, in this movie in here. Louis C.K. was, I think, was the most underrated performance of this movie because he was really, really good. Uh, he had some funny lines of dialogue, and he also had some very good scenes of drama, which I thought he did fairly well. Especially when he and Cranston are acting off each other, they have a they have a very good chemistry, and I would like to see more with them. But uh, what I got was great. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Well. Uh, there's another thing. Oh yeah, John Goodman. 
Sean Goodman plays the producer of uh, Z-List Hollywood Studio, and Goodman is hilarious. He doesn't have a lot of scenes, but the scenes he's in, I just, every, everything, whatever comes out of that man's mouth is gold. And just the way he, the way, the way Goodman does his delivery is just great. It's like a mile a minute. There's like this one, particularly this one scene I love so much where all the writers are at a round table and, and uh, Goodman is handing out scripts. And he's saying, this is good. This sucks because that's happening and that sucks, but this is happening and fix this. <laughs> it's great. And uh, another funny thing was when Trumbo first sells his first script to Goodman, Goodman just comes running out of the office and says, pay this man. I want more. That's not what he said, but he said something similar to it, and it was, oh, I laughed hysterical. So yeah, uh, I highly recommend Trumbo. This gets a this gets a rare ten out of ten for me. Uh, the story is engaging. The performances are amazing. The direction by Jay Roach, who is known for doing comedies, is solid, and he does a great job at adapting this script, and he does a good job at. Uh, Creating the atmosphere, creating an atmosphere, at creating the atmosphere of the uh, of the uh, late forties and fifties during the Hollywood Red Scare, and uh, like I said, the writing is solid. The writing is on point. The performances are on point. The direction is on point. This movie is on point. Gets a ten out of ten. Very few flaws in this, and whatever flaws they are in this is mediocre to me. Because like it doesn't doesn't take me out of the story. If anything, this is not a long movie. I think it should have gone a little longer, but that's just me. Because I was enjoying it so much. But anyway, that was Trumbo. This has been the Trumbo review. This has been Masterpiece Theater, and I'll see you again next time.